Hey everyone, welcome to Whole Artist Mastery. I'm Marianne Mitchell. I love reading all of your comments on the YouTube feeds. It's really interesting to hear your perspectives, to hear how much you're appreciating what I'm offering, what you're learning, and to hear your thoughts. And one of the comments really gave me an idea for today's discussion about meaning, style, and voice in your artwork. And the comment had to do with um, what meaning is in one's artwork and those artists who profess to have no meaning in their work, that their work is without meaning, that they just throw paint on the canvas and it's meaningless to them. And the first thing I wanna say is that every single artist is who they are and what they believe in or how they go about their particular process in making art is every bit as valid as anybody else's process in making art. So if somebody feels that their work is really without meaning, then it's without meaning. And yet I feel that in a way that's that has meaning, that there's meaning in the fact that it's meaningless. And it would be a very interesting discussion to have with someone who's a painter or another kind of artist who stands behind the, the, um, the practice of just throwing art or just throwing paint on the canvas and calling it meaningless. Um, and that led me to thinking about style because there are artists who profess to have no style and the irony in that, I believe, is that by saying I have no style, that's actually your style. So I want to talk about the relationship between style and voice. Many of the artists who come to work with me say that they're, they are actually searching for meaning, to express meaning from a deeper place within them and they're trying to figure out what their style is based on um, what their, the meaning is that they're interested in expressing or is there any meaning that they're interested in expressing and how do they develop a style. And style to me is a very um, narrow interpretation of your voice. And that's the next piece, is your voice. So we all have a particular sound of our voice. You're hearing me now talking in a particular way when I'm talking to my cat or when I'm talking to someone else that I hardly know or I'm talking to a, a great friend and we're having a gay old time laughing. The tenor and the style of my particular voice changes. And yet throughout all of those styles, whether I'm lecturing, whether I'm having a gay old time with a friend, talking to an animal, um, expressing anger, expressing great joy, all of those different ways of speaking are a different style within the range of my voice. It's the same thing in your artwork you have an inherent voice. Whether you choose to attach meaning to what your voice is saying is really entirely up to you. Um, but we have different styles within our voice, within how we express ourselves through our chosen medium, whether it's paint or three-dimensional work or mixed media or whatever. And in fact, our particular medium of choice has everything to do with our voice because it's important to have the right medium for what it is that you're trying to express within the range of your voice. Or it's, a, it's important to have the tools that are going to achieve a particular outcome that you're looking for, even if it's just throwing paint on the canvas without having any awareness or particular intention. So I'm going to show you a few of my pieces 
as examples of the range of my voice and how you see them tying together in their various different styles within my particular voice and how they came about with or without any intention to begin with. I want to talk to you about the current piece that I'm working on and to first tell you that what I'm doing with every single painting is having a conversation between the external world around me and my internal uh, world inside and how they relate to each other, how what I see and experience out in the world with people, with the landscape, with the cosmos, how that affects how I feel inside and vice versa, how I feel inside then um, helps me have some sort of relationship with what's happening around me. And so that there's this symbiotic circular experience between the, out, the exterior and the interior. I wanted to share that with you because for me right now, I'm living in this place and my studio is now in the same place that is surrounded by woods and streams and um, a lot of natural flora and fauna, a lot of animals. And so I can tell that my imagery is becoming more organic. Um, and of late, this particular kind of a line is showing up in most every painting that I'm doing. Um, I'm having a hard time changing that because that's what is inherently inside me and it's driving the meaning that uh, I'm creating in a piece. When I start a piece, I have absolutely zero percent intention of what it's going to be about. I start with zero percent expectations and 100 percent kindness for my own experience so that it allows me to just start throwing paint on without meaning to begin with. And the meaning comes as the paint language begins to happen. So in this particular case, what I see beginning to happen is the colors of the season. It's late November right now. And um, the particular light, the low light, the less intense light and yet the high contrast between the dark skies and the brilliant moon and how all of that makes me feel inside. This is another painting that I've created in the last year that has a very different uh, presentation in its visual language. It's much more angular, it's without organic um, movement, uh, not a lot of texture, and yet the line here is very reminiscent of the line in the last painting, even though it doesn't go all the way across. The other thing that you'll notice is that the colors are very similar. They're used in a very different way, but the color palette itself is inherently my color palette. Now there's a wide range of how I use those colors within my visual language but it is my particular voice. And again, this is a different style than the last painting I was talking about. But they both come from my sense of color, my sense of organizing shape, value, texture, and line. And each one is a discussion or a conversation that's using visual language to offer meaning both to myself as well as those who see it. And each person who looks at these paintings has a different experience. And I believe that those who look at these paintings have an understanding of some kind of meaning for themselves, whether it matches my meaning or whether it's very different because what I'm trying to do is offer what I call visual stories that have meaning for those who experience the paintings. Those who choose to have something that's meaningless, that's absolutely their prerogative and that's their desire and their intention 
for their work. So where do you fall on this? Is it something that, do you feel compelled to figure out what you're about and, and how that meaning shows up in your work and how to do that by using composition and color and visual language? I believe that each one of us has our own way of creating art and it's incumbent upon us to know what that is. For me, I'm hoping that my personal journey with what I'm trying to say is something that those who see it can relate to. One of my favorite lines um, is actually from the Joni Mitchell documentary, Woman of Heart and Mind, that was produced by PBS oh, back in the early 2000s. And the very last line that she says is, you know, I'm just trying to figure out my own journey and hope that other people get it. And as it turns out, they did. And so I think that's a wonderful example of the very personal journey being something that the universal collective of humanity can understand. So I hope that this brings this issue to the foreground for you to think about, you know, your meaning in your work or lack of meaning in your work, what your styles are and how that fits within your voice. And I invite you to go to my website and sign up for one of the online classes that actually help you to go in this direction. One of them is understanding your visual language. Another one is entering abstraction with oil pastels, which is a great way to, to get into the realm of abstraction, which is a realm that does access a deeper place within us without having concrete uh, visual imagery. And the third one is all about color, understanding practical application of color. These are all great tools that you can use to develop your own artwork. And um, so I invite you to go look at the videos or to go see the classes on the online class section in the whole Artist Mastery website. So thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you next time.